Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we continue our Godot uh, Bevy example and we'll make the foundation to build up our tutorial from there. So basically, first of all, we will try to enable uh, Godot to call our Rust code based on each frame, which gets updated. And the idea behind it is that we will use this kind of update process in order to update our entity component framework world. So therefore we just add the underscore process, which is like a predefined um, Rust method. What you get actually when you use the uh, go.native um, API. And then we just put the print message there and let's see if it works and updates properly. It should be called many, many times and we should see it in the debugger. Ah, now we have an issue there. It looks like that it's not called. Ah, because an argument is missing. So the underscore process is expecting a, a float value and therefore we need to extend our arguments here, which is like the delta time. Um, and this is like a float um, 64. Then we are going back, rebuild it, going back to the Godot engine and then restart it. And now it should be printed out. Perfect. So our process, at least the method gets now called on each frame. Please keep in mind that we are not going to do performance optimizations in, in this tutorial series. So this is just like an um, example, of course, how you could implement it. So the next thing is what we want to do actually in this method is like we want to call our ECS, kind of an update method. Of course, this is now not implemented, so we need to implement everything uh, from there. Um, so that means let's jump to the ECS and then add a new method to update it. In order that we can update our world, we need a scheduler. So Bevy introduces schedulers, what are actually used to run the world into. And these schedulers are actually then used to run the individual defined systems. And in addition to that, we will also already make the basic structure of this example. Um, what we are now going to implement just to have everything in place and a bit more structured. So, from there on, we continue now to redefining and refactoring the previous um, code what we had by introducing a folder for scheduler. Then we also have a folder for systems. We add entity and components as well in separate folders. And those are then the used modules what we're going to use later and put all the components in one place, the entities in one place, the systems in one place. This makes the code more readable and easier to, to work with. And in order to import them a bit more comfortable, we are actually using the prelude mechanism. So we actually we define a module which exports each individual folder com, um, de declarations or definitions so that we can just 
more comfortable reference them. In order to use these new modules, we need also to um, declare them in the libRS file, so mod components, mod entities, system, scheduler should be defined here. Next, let's get rid of the component in our ECS uh, file and then add the specific imports. Therefore, we are now referring to the individual folder and the prelude sections by importing them as a star. And therefore, we get everything imported per default as needed. When we are now trying to compile it, we will get most likely an error. Yes, because we forgot in the ECS to add the scheduler um, property. So therefore, let's heading back to the scheduler folder and add the new main, main scheduler, which implements kind of a default behavior for now. Um, and then reference it in our ECS library. In the next step, we also continue by adding the specific components and positions now as we have splitted them as you saw before. So scene entity is now like an empty entity and then part of it we have add also the or attach also the component position to it. So therefore let's align this new behavior as we edit it when we spawn a new scene entity. And as we are forgotten, have forgotten the, the scheduler module declaration in the libRS file, we add it there so that we can reference the schedule 
package now as well or our module let's say package is a bit misleading <laughs> sorry for that and then we just instance the default behavior for now what we have implemented or actually what we are gonna implement now Then let's try to recompile and we get again an error. It looks like that we are using the wrong type. So that means the main scheduler is actually of the struct main scheduler. Then we do a quick formatting that it looks a bit more structured and we clean a bit up the formatting. And then just ensure that we call in the update word our scheduler. And when we call the scheduler, we are passing the word to it. Please keep in mind that currently we did not implement this method, so we will heading over to our main uh, scheduler RS file to continue the implementation there. So therefore, let's add another main scheduler uh, declaration and extend it. So we call it run and pass the word as an argument to it. And as our main scheduler actually contains internally the scheduler, which gets called the bevy scheduler, we will also update the instantiation of it and the default implementation. And for now, we just implement the default behavior and then run it in the run method. So self dot and then scheduler and then run and we pass the word at that time. Next, we just restructure a bit or add some nicer formatting to it and also get rid of the warnings what we have just to have a more clean build process. Also, let's get rid of the other warning here regarding the delta time by just adding an underscore. Now we built, we don't have any warnings anymore. So basically on that, this is the second part. From there on, in the third part of the tutorial series, we continue and start implementing our first systems. Thank you for watching. See you next time.